Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, for those of you who aren't aware, once a week on Facebook at Medium Mike Cavalli, which I'll put the link in the description if you do want to go and watch our shows. So once a week, Wednesdays, 10 o'clock in Austria, which is in Europe, or 7 p.m. Brisbane, Australia time, we do a weekly one and a half hour show where we talk about paranormal stuff, anything from angel stories, NDE stories, ghost videos, ghost photos, you name it. And we talk about what the phenomena is and trying to, do, to debunk it, etc. Okay? So last night, because it's Thursday morning for me now, last night during our show with Mike Cavalli over at Medium Mike Cavalli, we were talking about a story where Mike showed a video of a lady who was involved in a plane crash. During the show, I said to Mike, wow, I was in a plane crash too. And I had a very similar occurrence where I heard a lady tell me what to do. So I said during the show last night that I'll do a video today. And here I am. So I've actually written about my plane crash but I'm going to tell you the story today about what happened because in my book obviously um, I don't want to just talk about you know what this girl does with me my lady who's always with me so my book five years in heaven the teachings of heaven which is available on Lulu by the way you can see how big it is on page 12 and 13 I've got fourth instance where I talk about stories where this lady has interacted with me. So <clears throat> for what people don't know, I was going over to America to marry my second husband. He lived in North Carolina. I lived in Brisbane, Australia. So you can imagine the flights that I did. You know, I did 14 trips back and forward to America um, whilst we were sorting out whether we were getting married, immigration, etc. Because I could only stay over there for a short period of time each time. So I couldn't just go over there and stay. So <clears throat> I've just got to get myself together because this was a very, very, very scary night for me. So on page 12, where I'm talking about instances where this lady has... Um, I, I actually say, who is this lady? Chapter one. So the fourth instance, which is on page 12, I just want to give you a little excerpt today from my book on page 12. And then I'll, I'll explain and go into further exaggeration about what happened on that night, okay? So here we go straight from my book. Fourth instance of this in lady's interaction. During 1999 and nine, oh, 1998 and 1999, I travelled from Australia to the USA a total of 14 times. One of these flights consisted of travelling from Brisbane, Australia to Narita, Japan, where I had a layover, which means that we stay over the night, and then the next day I had a flight to the US. About three hours outside of Narita, so um, from Brisbane to Japan is about, I think it was about a seven hour flight. Okay. So <clears throat> we're four hours into our flight over water, which didn't help. Okay. Where I was sitting, I um, explain it like this. Let me just go into it before I keep reading. I was sitting on an aisle here to my right. Next to me was a lady and her husband was on the window. I always sit on the wing because that's one of the safest places to sit on the plane, okay? Just letting you know. So outside the window past this couple, I could see the wing. Then there was an aisle, then there was four seats, another aisle, and then an another three seats. So it was one of those big Boeing planes that I was on. I was actually talking to this lady. She was very little, shimmer, timid and shy little lady, okay? She was actually quite lovely. So we'd been talking, you know, for about four hours and stuff, um, going over to Narita. So let me just go back now that you know where I was sitting on the plane, okay? 
So one of these flights consisted of travelling from Brisbane, Australia to Narita, Japan, where I had a layover prior to my flight to the USA next day. About three hours outside of Narita, I'm reading now straight from my book, I was sitting in my seat and I heard a female yell out at me, buckle up. I looked around and saw that no one was talking to me. So I gazed back at the book that I was reading. Buckle up! I heard again, this time louder. It was more of a yelling in my ear. I looked around at the passengers on the plane and no one appeared to have said the words as it was night and many were sleeping. I thought I would go to the toilet. And whilst in the cubicle, I heard the same woman yell, Buckle up! This time the voice was more serious, louder and direct. It was more like an order than a simple gesture. And again, this voice was external to me. The voice was not inside my head. It was like this woman was standing a few feet away from me, talking to me. I knew it was the same woman who had spoken each time to me, as her voice was high-pitched and had a certain tone. I returned to my seat and put on my seatbelt. So <clears throat> what happened is I was in the toilet and it was like she was just like two feet in front of me. Buckle up! So I'm like this in the toilet thinking I'm the only one in here who's saying that. So I got back to my seat, sat down next to this lady <clears throat> and I was as I was putting on my seatbelt, you know how they, they clasp together at the front and then you pull the tie to tighten it up? Just as I was pulling that tie, over the PA came the captain. Tension, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. And as he said that, I actually had the thought of, oh God, here we go. What's going on? So he continued, please return to your seats immediately and please note that the seatbelt sign has just been put on. We are about to hit turbulent weather turbulent weather you know when you just do this on a plane where it just shakes it started like that <laughs> then it went to like this you know we're sitting in our seat you know because you've got your um seat rests where your arms sit and you're sitting there doing like this right so we're like this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the plane just dropped from nowhere. Oh! Oh! Bleh. <laughs> then we're still doing the uh, like this. And then we just go straight up. It's like being on a roller coaster. So what happened during these huge ex <laughs> ascending and descending trips? everybody started throwing up you know how you get those sick bags on a plane and we just had fish and chicken for dinner you can imagine the smell of everybody vomiting right so <laughs> we're doing this and then this man not the wife because she's like sitting there she's gone bright red oh my god i thought she was having a heart attack and she's vomiting into the sick bag her husband is sitting there and he yells this gem out. He's sitting there like, ah, oh, like this in the turbulence. And he yells out, I remember nights like this. I was back in Nam. You know the Vietnam War? That's when I should have kicked him in the head to make him unconscious. Because he said, I remember back in Nam. We had flights like this. We thought we were all gonna die. <laughs> oh my God. Things that you don't say on a plane in massive turbulence, right? Then as he yells that out and I look around at him past this woman because, oh man, my punch was coming, right? I thought he's got to go unconscious straight away because he's stressing people out. And as I looked at him, Lightning hit the wing and the wing blew up and now we've got fire, fire, fire all over the wing. 
and I'm looking out the window at all these flames with yeah, you because know, we're traveling, so it's all going backwards. And I thought, holy shit, yeah, because we're sitting there, holy shit. Then we go up, ah, and then we go down, ah. And now, because we've lost both engines on the left, the plane is like this. Ah. You know those um, emergency oxygen tents, the oxygen masks that come down? They released, and the funniest thing, because we're flying like this instead of flying like this, the oxygen masks were flapping around and they were actually hitting the roof of the cabin because we're and I actually thought the people sitting in the rows next to me were all going to land on me the the woman and this guy and we're all going to get crushed right thank god I had my seatbelt on because she told me to put on your seatbelt so to continue the story we're ah oh my god we actually flew into a category 3 typhoon that was hitting Tokyo if that tells you anything about the turbulence. So, we're coming down for landing, <laughs> like jumping up and jumping down. Everyone's still vomiting. And the funniest thing is, when a plane lands, right? You've got the, you've got the fuselage with the wing. I'll just make this a wing and I'll make this a wing, right? When a plane comes in to land, the wheels come out of the fuselage and they should always touch first, right? Wheels always touch the ground first. But because we're coming down at an angle because we'd lost the wet engines, guess what happened? The wing touched the ground first. So as we're coming into land, here's the ground and we're coming in like this the wing touched the ground and what should have happened that night because I've watched I've watched heaps of air crash investigation shows what should have happened that night is when the wing touches first the whole plane does a roll and explodes Big fiery kaboom occurs when the wing touches first. But in our instance, what happened is we came in, the wing touched first, which sort of got us nudged and the whole plane went around into a big 180. So now we're going sort of backwards as we're going forwards at the same time. And we spun out and did this huge arc through the tarmac, through the bushes. We took out a couple of vehicles, I know, because I heard the crunch of vehicles, and we ended two kilometres away in the Avis car park. So then we're all sitting in there because we're now on the ground and we're like, <laughs> oh, 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 how, do, how do we get off this thing? <laughs> that was a cool ride, but not again, please. The air hostesses came out. <laughs> Poor little duck she was. You know, I was on a JAL flight, which is Japan Airlines. And at the door in front of me comes out this probably four foot two nothing, <laughs> little tiny Japanese air hostess. And she opens the door and she's shaking like this. I could see her from like 10 rows away. <laughs> she's doing this. And she releases this big lever and the slide came out. A big yellow, or was it orange because it was in the middle of the night? I can't really remember that part because I'm still lost in looking at the damn oxygen masks falling from the ceiling. So we had to go down the slide. So as people are queuing, because hello, everyone was trying to run, right? Everyone wanted to get off this ride, the roller coaster. <clears throat> She's there and... I've actually um, been interviewed by airlines to be an air hostess over the time. And they what they do is when they get you up there, they, they make you put your arms like this. 
And then because people look down and think, whoa, that's a long way, she actually has to push them over, right? So then they jump, right? So as people were coming up, she was doing this, doing like this, and she's shaking to make people put their arms like this. And she was pushing them down the slide. Next, 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 next. And I'm just sitting in my seat thinking, okay, I can wait my turn, you know, because everyone was queuing. So <clears throat> I, I was one of the last off the plane. And I walked up to this little air hostess, little Chinese girl, I think she was from China or Japan. She was Asian. And I looked at her and I said, uh, are you all right? And she said, th thanks, thanks for flying JAL. And she's pushing people out the door. Th 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 thanks for flying JAL. She's pushed another one down the ramp. Th th thanks, thanks for flying JAL. Push. So when I got up to her, I said, are you all right? And she said, oh, yes, I'm, I'm fine. Tomorrow I'm flying to Hawaii. <laughs> tomorrow I'm flying to Hawaii. <clears throat> and I looked at her and I said, oh, tomorrow I'm flying to L.A. Um, <laughs> and down I go. It's really fast, by the way. You, you think you're just going to jump and then all of a sudden you're at the bottom of the ramp, right? You know, it, 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 you do go down them quite fast. So <clears throat> a couple of buses turned up because we we're all just like standing there like, what just the fuck happened? I mean, <laughs> what happened? I hope I, um, YouTube doesn't stop me for that one. Because um, <laughs> we were all swearing, right? <clears throat> and I'm walking around and there's people with big chunks of fish in their hair. Because <laughs> everybody was vomiting. <laughs> oh, my God. So I get on this bus. <clears throat> And um, we go back to the tarmac, um, to, to the terminal, I mean. And everyone's getting their bags off the carousel. <laughs> well, it was a wait. Believe me, it was a wait. Okay, it took about four hours for everything to get settled. And um, I get this bus over to my hotel where I'm staying the night in Narita. Funny thing. I remember the guy handed me my keys and he said, oh, you're up on the fourth floor. Sixth? Can't really remember. All I remember it was high. So I've got my bags. Oh my God. And I walked into the hotel room and in front of me, I had the bed. There was a cupboard with a TV and over on the back wall, there was windows with a curtain closed. So I've walked in, put down my bags, had a look in the bathroom to get my bearings on where I am for the night. <clears throat> walked over to the window and I opened the curtains. Instantly, it hit me the shock of what I've just been through. I looked down and it was like instant shock. So I closed the curtains, turned on the TV and I tried lying on the bed looking at the TV and that did not work. So I ended up lying on the floor looking up at the TV on this cabinet cupboard thing and that's when I felt safe and secure again. So please know guys, you know, shock is horrendous. I got it pretty bad that night after what I just lived through. But thankfully, um, there was only minor injuries and no one actually did get killed. No one died as a result of what we went through. So the, the pilots on that flight were really good. <clears throat> Not like the story that we were talking about last night where a big hole um, gashed out and about 10 people were sucked out of the plane and died. Um, yeah, so that's my story about how I survived a plane crash. But what we've got to remember here, guys, is this woman, she obviously knew something was about to happen. So she's got that insight. She's psychic or intuitive, whatever you want to call it. Secondly, she did not tell me, grab a parachute. She just told me to buckle up, correct? Which is out of my book. So if I go back over to my book... <clears throat> so if you've got a copy you can read it it's on page 12 the fourth instance um, <laughs> it was one of the most terrifying flights I'd ever been on landing in Narita the plane actually landed on the wing instead of the wheels the plane rolled and banked to the left and came to a stop two miles away from the runway in the Avis car park all I remember to this day is that this woman told me to buckle up she did not say to start praying 
or to find a parachute. So this comes down, guys. Whenever we hear these voices, they're generally about two foot away from us, the same as in our show last night when we're talking about the plane angel. They're giving us this warning. One, we've got to be open and receptive to receiving the messages, right? Two, it is our own free will whether we act on it or not. I could have just gone down to the back doors and just stood there with a couple of other people and just had some time standing up, correct? I did not have to pay attention to what she said. But ultimately, thank goodness I went to the toilet because, hello, everybody was going into shock. You know, there were people in the, on the plane peeing their pants, etc. Okay? It wasn't a nice night. But ultimately, we've got to trust what they say to the point where we listen to their words. She said, buckle up. She did not say, start praying or grab a parachute, correct? So we've, it comes down to us, when we get these messages from spirit, spirit guides, angels, whoever they are, we must listen first, comprehend what the message is, and then act on that advice. So that's the message for today, guys. If ever you hear a voice, <clears throat> don't go that way to work today, or go outside, because these are some of the messages that I get from her every day, okay? Always act on it, but use your critical thinking, and most of all, analyze the words that are said, <clears throat> because the messages are in, they're like code. We've got to decipher the code sometimes. <clears throat> she didn't say, you're all going to die tonight, okay? She didn't say that, start writing your will. She didn't say that. She said, buckle up. So that's why when we landed, that's why I sat there and let everybody else get off the plane first. Because I knew, even before the plane crash incident, <laughs> I was going to be all right. So how do we learn our intuition? Trusting them. Asking them to talk to us. And that's as simple as it is talk to them and all I all I say to her because she knows me so intimately like they do all I say to her is thank you I always give that grace first thank you for being with me thank you <clears throat> for choosing me over eight billion other people that you could have been with right I am so honored to have you so I give her that grace and then I say to her if there are messages <clears throat> excuse me my raspy voice thank you if there are any messages that you have for me please allow me to hear them clearly and please come through so I understand what it is that you want me to hear that's about as basic as it is guys so there you go I survived a plane crash I wouldn't some um I wouldn't put my worst enemy on that plane that night it was pretty horrendous okay yeah but until next time guys i hope you've listened to the moral of the story trust them listen to them and ask them for more have a good day guys bye To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.